Hey everyone, uh, welcome back uh, to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the session management attacks uh, using the Buff Sequencer. So Buff Sequencer is um, an amazing tool uh, which is free, uh, which is available in the community edition. Uh, to perform like you know some uh, I wouldn't say just limited to session management attacks, but mostly uh, that's that's what I've been using it for the penetration testing. So in this episode, we're going to discuss uh, the different uh, session management attacks like test cases and and then demonstrate how the bulk sequencer can really be used. So uh, first off, like uh, let's uh, go through like you know what are the different attacks that one should do uh, or check when they are doing like you know penetration testing on the application. So the first thing is uh, the session token is uh, very important and, and, and the reason it is because uh, that would define whether the user is authenticated or not. Now there are some uh, like you know hard coded or I would say uh, common session ID names uh, which is like PHP, SC, SSID, J session ID, CFID, CF token. So for example CFID and CF token is for the cold fusion and of course the .NET, ASP.NET session ID is for the .NET application. So when you come across this session, like you know, names of these cookies, then you could easily say, yeah, this holds some sensitive information. And, and of course, whenever there is a session ID, we want to make sure it's random, it's unique, it's like, you know, non-hijackable, non-brute force non protected and all those things. Uh, so first thing, uh, we want to make sure uh, the session expires. Uh, so like, you know, uh, after a certain time period when the session is ideal or sitting sitting just just sitting there it should expire in a little while the other thing we want to validate is the session id length uh the it should be long so uh, usually you can you can check that while while you are intercepting traffic within the burp suite but of course that just do, does not like you know uh, tell you if it's uh, really uh, the consistent length and it's really unique, so that's why we're going to use the buff sequencer to validate that. And we also want to make sure, like, you know, uh, its length as well as uh, it has a good entropy, so someone cannot just brute force the session ID. So, for example, even if it's like a 20 characters long and the session ID is essentially number 1 to 20, just changing the last digit, then it's not, it's, it's a, it has a uh, length, but it's not complex, right? So that's something uh, we want to make sure. And and the random session ID is also uh, not enough, I would say, because there is a possibility that uh, it, in some scenario, like, you know, uh, for example, if you think of a Google application or the Gmail application where there are like hundreds and thousands of people are logging into Gmail every day, and it it doesn't have to be duplicated as well. They have to make sure it doesn't get duplicated within the session ID space. Just imagine if my and your session ID is the same. Uh, when we log into the Gmail, I might get access to your emails in that case. So it has to be unique. It has to be random. It has to be uh, like you know uh, complex. It has has to have like particular length and then entropy and non duplicate and all those things. So uh, all these things is pretty much difficult to check. Uh, uh, like you know just by manual testing and that's why a buff sequencer uh, will be a good tool and it provides like you know uh, you, what you can do is you can analyze the quality of the randomness of the sample data so what it does is it will give you will give them a sample of the session tokens and it's going to analyze how how it works and and there is no limit so you can give sample like a 100 tokens 200 500 thousand tokens right so that's why it's really good because manually testing this uh, would take you forever to do that. So uh, and and not just like you know the session tokens, but you can also use it like just imagine what session tokens you have, or like not just session token, but any token that you have in the application. For example, NTCSRF token. Uh, uh, let's say there is a forget password, so forget password also generates a token. Uh, then uh, you also you might also have like you know a password reset token. So all these tokens can also be analyzed with the buff sequencer. So let's uh, open up the buff sequencer. We'll, we'll we'll check a quick example on how you can uh, check for the random session token. We'll we'll get a, a good demo, and then and probably uh, we're gonna use the demo test fire application to analyze the session token.
So uh, this is the latest version of our birth suite, and uh, as we can see, they have changed things quite a bit. Uh, now you can also use the Burps and embedded browser rather than configuring uh, uh, proxy in your existing browser like Firefox or Mozilla. So I'm just going to use that. Uh, before that, let's take a quick peek at the sequencer. So it's right here. Of course, this is a pro version, but uh, even if the community edition, this is available uh, as well. So you can uh, feel free to use it. Uh, so first thing, what we're going to do is we're going to open the browser. And I'm going to use the Burp browser, so let me bring it over here. We do not want to capture this request, so I'm just going to intercept off for a sec until all the request has been processed. Okay, I think, all right, we are good now. Now, like, just take a look at the sequencer here. Uh, so the first one here is which request you want to capture or which token you want to analyze. So uh, whichever token you want to analyze, it has to be part of the request, so which will be shown here. So for example, if we go back to our browser here, and let's say uh, HTTP demo.testfire.net. All right. Oh, and also make sure you have the intercept response on. Okay, so unfortunately we did not see the request here, but of course what we can do is we can go back in the HTTP history, and the first request we're gonna see is this one, uh, which is to get request to demo test fire, and in the response we have this J session ID. Now, very important thing you need to uh, uh, make sure when you are using sequencer to analyze any random source and token, you need to give a sequencer a, a request. So here you can send it to sequencer. So you only give request to a sequencer which does not have an existing session token. So for example, if we look at the next request, not this one, sorry. Uh, let me intercept off and just click on something. So, for example, if this request also uh, has like you know session token in in the request, so this wouldn't classify as a like you know a good test case for the sequencer because it's not able to generate its own session token. But if we take a look at this uh, request, so if I send it to repeater first, so as you can see, when we are clicking next, every time we are getting a new uh, session token here. So just analyze that. Right, so this is the request. Right, it's generating the application is generating a new session token. That's the request we're gonna send it to the sequencer. Now, sometimes it happens when the application is loading, like, uh, and it keeps the same session token uh, when you authenticate as well. Uh, they just change the state in the back end. But sometimes it's also possible that the they will give you one session token like this one, and then it will give you another session token when you authenticate. So. Uh, in that scenario, you want to give the session token which is generated post authentication, right? Uh, so in this example, all right. So we got this uh, request in the sequencer here. Now we uh, we're gonna select which cookie we wanna analyze. For example, if if this doesn't pop up by default, then you can also configure. So you can go here. You can uh, make uh, like you know uh, from the regex. You can also have from the start end and delimiter like we used to do for the intruder. So you can also do that. But by it's pretty much like you know a uh, sequencer is able to figure out like which cookie we want to analyze if you send the right request. Uh, next thing, uh, how many threads you want to run? Uh, it depends on the bandwidth of the uh, application, and then you also uh, want to configure like. Uh, this is by default, by the way, but ignore tokens whose length deviates by five. So just to avoid any uh, analysis of any unrequired tokens. Uh, if you do not have a live application, you can also uh, uh, upload the manual uh, request or manual set of tokens and it will analyze. So any random numbers you want to analyze in your, uh, like, you know, uh, project, you can just upload those here and uh, you can analyze and then Analysis option is pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, batch short token at start. So of course, uh, if the token is base 64 encoded, you can also decode. 
in this case it's a JSON ID which is not encoded so we and these are some like you know what checks do you want to happen uh, when the analysis is working so let's go back to the live capture and start the live capture now as you can see the token is being uh, like you know it's been making requests you can also say auto analyze every 100 requests so it's going to auto analyze and the more the request the better the results right as you can see this number is keep on changing every 100 requests and and it's able to uh, so of course uh, i guess the 200 or 300 requests is good enough samples are good enough uh, to make the uh, decision whether it's a good or not but then let's stop this one for now but then again if you uh, if you're not confident with the results you can have like you know uh, more than 2 300 requests to have the analysis but so it gives you uh, quite a bit of details and like you know a bit level analysis and all of this we are not going to go into much detail of everything I'll, I'll put a put a link in the description below if you're interested on on learning what this each analysis is but uh, as a pen tester if uh, you just want to focus on what's the reliability of the results what what does the bulb sheet says so for example in here it says the analysis uh, based on sample of 800 tokens based on the sample size the reliability of the result is poor i don't know why it says because 800 is a good sample uh then this is you can ignore now here it says sample size was 800 token length is 32 uh, which is uh, not bad i would say uh this shows about the entropy uh again uh, once you click on the link in the description below you'll be able to learn about what the entropy is and here uh, the summary result says the quality of the randomness uh within the sample is estimated to be excellent right at a significant level of 1% of the amount of effective entropy is estimated to be 111 bits so this is a good number because we want uh it to be at least 64 bits so this is beyond 64 bits so uh, and of course this is good so we don't need to much worry about when they are using like you know a uh, standard algorithm for generating a session token uh, when the application is using it but it 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 kind of concerning if it's using its own session token sometime so that's when we want to uh, make sure that we are doing uh, good uh, analysis on this one so this is how you can uh, easily configure and uh, uh work through like okay what's what's a session token and how do you analyze uh, not just a session but also i sometimes use like you know for the csrf token as well because it's equally important as a session token uh so that's i guess that uh, that's all i want to discuss in this short video uh, thank you for your time and if you enjoy this video uh, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel you can also follow us on the facebook page where we have all the description the link is in the description as well I have provided links uh, to learn more about these results. Uh, as I said, like uh, please check that out uh, if you are interested to know more about like how does Burp uh, do all this analysis. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.